Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. No, indeed, there's no England now. And we're next. The Arabs have taken over England, they're taking over the Middle East, and they're going to take over America. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Oh, I realize these are harsh words, and sure to excite the ire of the thought police. But let me read you some headlines. Are you ready for them? Arabic is the fastest growing language in the United States of America. America. How is that possible? How is it that Arabic and Urdu, Pakistan's national language, are the fastest growing foreign languages spoken in the United States of America? How is it even possible that Obama is allowed to do this to us? How is it possible that Barack Hussein Obama is importing more than a quarter of a million or 280,000 Muslim immigrants a year. How is it possible? Did you know that 91.4% of recent refugees from the Middle East are on food stamps? They're deadbeats. Did you know that? Oh, I know that's embarrassing. I know that will shock the ACLU to even hear that on the airwaves of America. I realize we're not allowed to say what the facts tell us is true. But who will tell it to you if not I? Well, I'll tell it to you over and over again until you realize that in Europe, the same thing is happening. And Le Pen, Marine Le Pen, the outspoken leader of France's National Front, has said that Europe's migrant flood equals a barbarian and the barbarian invasions of the fourth century. Now, I want to tie that to my own planter box in the side of my house. I know you're saying that's a big jump, isn't it? I have a planter box in the side of my house. In the planter box, I have a rhododendron. That has been cultivated, it's watered properly, it gets the proper amount of sun, and it's dying anyway. No matter what I do, it's dying. But in this fertile planter box, a weed has appeared. An errant seed has popped into the planter box, and it's being starved, it's let to dry, and yet this weed is growing, it's thriving, it's overtaking the rhododendron. And of course, as a biologist, I studied survival of the fittest from my earliest days. And I have to ask myself, what has happened in the planter box called America? that we are being pushed out of our own planter box by invading weeds. Now I realize that's a harsh statement. I recognize that will ruffle the feathers of all of those sensitive liberals who can't wait to be thrown off roofs by ISIS. I know it will really unsettle all of those feminists who cannot wait to be thrown down wells by the very people who they embrace. I recognize that. But since they suffer from the mental illness called liberalism, and I am a healthy, sane American male, I'll continue and tell you that this country is dying because the American people have become weak. I want to read you something. It's written by a man named, I never met him, he's with a group called rightpundits.com. His name is Andrew Zarwny, Z-A-R-O-W-N-Y, Zarwny. And here's what he writes. And I'm not going to read the name of the author he is writing about. I'll let you figure out who it is. He said, this new book will rock our political world. Blank once again takes on those who intend to rob us of our freedom and our very lives. For years he has been preaching his message of borders, language, and culture. No borders, no language, no culture. Blank takes us down the dark road being paved by progressives, Marxists, and Islamofascists. Blank pulls no punches, bashing away at Republicans and Democrats alike, even taking on Pope Francis. The treachery and high treason of Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, John Boehner, Jeb Bush, and a host of others is fully exposed for all to see. Blank paints a bleak picture, but he offers a solution. In his previous nonfiction work, Blank proposed that the only way to hope to bring an end to the nightmare known as the Obama administration was to elect Republicans. But what did that get us? Not much, if anything. The GOP took back control of the United States Senate but has failed miserably under Mitch McConnell. Obama is walking all over them. Now we face a world where Iran will soon have a nuclear weapon, where ISIS or ISIL, if you prefer, will run amok through the Middle East, where Europe will be overrun by Muslims, where America will only give refuge to Syrian Muslims and not to Christians whom are being slaughtered. 
Obama and his minions are not only just leaving our borders wide open for a torrent of illegal immigrants to pour in from Central and South America, but is now flying in unvetted persons from places ripe with radical Islam. Who knows how many Islamic extremists and terrorists will be brought in at our own expense and peril. Obama has already changed our commitment from just a few thousand Syrian refugees to 200,000. Give Obama an inch and he'll take a mile and a half. Michael Savage lays out his argument as to the existence and nature of Government Zero, all with full references easily fact-checked. Step by step, item by item, Savage details every aspect of the destruction of America's borders, language, and culture. From schoolyards and churches to corporate boardrooms in the Pentagon, the hand of Obama and others are busy doing the devil's work. The rise of radical Islam and the rebirth of Soviet-style Marxism are joined hand in hand, each pounding away at what remains of Western civilization. To say this is a must-read book is putting it mildly. If you care at all about your present life and liberty, and those of the future for your offspring, then Government Zero by blank is for you. Savage has not lost faith in the American people, but he has with the virtual single party rule by Republicans and Democrats. The window of hope is closing rapidly, and Michael Savage believes now more than ever, before that the time has come for a new third party, a nationalist party whose candidates are committed to doing what is right for the legal citizens of the United States, preserving the U.S. Constitution as well as our borders, language, and culture. Left-wing fanatics will jump on this and falsely claim that Savage, Savage has gone Nazi. But Michael Savage knows the difference between nationalism and national socialism. He explains this well and turns the tables, as it is the very same critics who are in support of Government Zero as a policy goal. Savage exposes them for who they truly are, traitors, liars, and all-around villains. In the Savage world, there is little space between those who behead Christians and Jews in the name of Allah and those who butcher babies to sell their body parts in the name of science. A nationalist is one who wants only the best for his or her own country. They oppose those who think that playing a second fiddle or caving into unjust demands by other nations and groups who seek to hold the upper hand over us. With our current crop of politicians who seem more interested in their own gains <clears throat> and those of their financial backers, America is ceasing to have a government by the people, of the people, and for the people. On nearly every major issue that has emerged in recent years, from Obamacare to the Iran nuclear deal, the polling data shows that a majority of the people oppose such. Yet Obama, Congress, and even the Supreme Court are letting it all slide along. Who needs to be invaded when our own leaders are destroying our nation? So if there's one book to read, Government Zero by Michael Savage is it. But let me tell you something. It lays out the whole dark world that the progressives, Marxists, and radical Islamic jihadis have in store for us. Do you want a nation? Do you want sound borders, language, and culture? Or are you ready to bow and scrape? before government zero with no borders, no language, and no culture, other than a culture of death and destruction. The clock is ticking, he writes, my fellow Americans. Don't be caught snoozing when the you-know-what hits the fan. And that's a review by rightpundits.com. Donald Trump will be on the show in the next hour. What would you ask him? If you were me, what would you ask Donald Trump? Now, here's some of the headlines that caught my eye, printed stories, ready to talk about them. New American Century, Arabic is fastest growing language in the USA by Julia Hahn of Breitbart. From Breitbart again, Le Pen, Europe's migrant flood equals barbarian invasions of the 4th century. From Fox News, ISIS touts baby boom as key to caliphate's future. Did you know that's what's going on? Did you know that these 7th century throwbacks are raping their way to a population explosion? Did you know that's what they're doing? The black-clad Nazi va vermin are raping their way across the Middle East and procreating with the captured brides. Not one word from the American goddesses of feminism. How to raise a jihadi baby. Key feature of ISIS publications. Sisters role in jihad. There's a picture of an infant in a cradle lying next to a machine gun, next to a pistol and a grenade. And in this country, we have a psychopath in the White House who wants to take away your right to bear arms. Let me tell you something. There was an actor a long time ago who said, you'll have to pry it out of my cold, dead hands. That should be your motto. Never give up your weapon. Never give up your weapon to one of the Nazis in this government. Never!
It's the only reason that ISIS will never take over this country. It's because of an armed civilian population. It's the reason they've been able to rampage across Europe, because the French have been disarmed. The British have been disarmed. The people are afraid of them, but they won't be afraid. They won't be afraid much longer. They won't be afraid much longer because the revolution is brewing in Europe. Unfortunately for them, they have no way to defend themselves other than with their fists and their brains. And that is because the Obamas of Europe have stolen their guns a long time ago, as they have in Australia, by the way. That's another headline. How about another one? Obama's pushing a new trade pact with uh, Asia, some parts of Asia, not including China. He's calling it the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal. And what is this devious anti-American leader of America doing this for? Is it good for American business? Well, it's good for some of the scum in business. Some of the rats who hate this country and would sell their mother's shoes if they could to get a bigger bottom line. You have no idea what contempt I have for these people. You have no idea what power, what I would do if I had power. You ought to be glad that I'm only on the radio. If you think this is all an act, then I pity you. How can you accept a nation where there are businessmen who would do deals that would further eviscerate our managing power, excuse me, our industrial capacity and send jobs to Asia? Why would you do that at a time like this when employment is in such a bad state, when our economy is still shaky, where the government is printing money to prop up the economy? Why would you sell the country out to Japan, to Thailand and Malaysia and other countries in the Pacific Rim? Why is Obama doing that? Is it to help us? No, it's to help a few of the giant quislings who do business with these countries who care less about America than you could than Obama does, if you could believe it. Largely Silicon Valley and others, by the way. Guys like Mark Zuckerberg, a man without a country. Despite his billions, in my opinion, he is a man without a country. He has no loyalty to the nation that gave him this fortune. And he epitomizes everything wrong with American business today. I oppose this trade deal. I oppose it not because I oppose free trade, but there is no such thing as free trade with these nations. Don't let them fool you. This is not about free trade. They have tariffs on American goods which will remain in place. The only difference is we, the moronic nation, has let the shyster in the White House trick you into thinking it's free trade when, in fact, it is not free trade. It's bent trade. And if you think I'm wrong, then why is it the AFL-CIO opposed this trade deal? How come I, Michael Savage, the vociferous nationalist, the vociferous right-wing talk show host who is so offensive to all of you delicate superior liberals, how is it that my opinion on this trade deal, which is really a trader's deal, is opposed by the AFL-CIO and your hero, Bernie Sanders, the soapbox orator from New York's Lower East Side. So I'm going to talk about the trade deal today, what's actually in it, and why you must absolutely oppose it. Here's another one. Donald Trump declares war on Obama trade. Time to send the real businessman to the White House to end this. You see the difference between him? Do you understand this? Well, that's the opening to my show. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Survival of the fittest is today's theme, and wherever you look, it's really no different than it was when Darwin first articulated this idea of survival of the fittest. Nothing's really changed, except that in our country, the country itself, the government itself, seems to be targeting the most fit people in America and inhibiting them in every, any way they can, every way they can, whether it's a boy on a playground or an athlete on a football field. There seems to be an almost devious madness to inhibit the fittest, and to make certain that the weakest thrive while the fittest die off. If that's not suicide, national suicide, please tell me what is. Please tell me what is. When a nation takes its masculine pride and attempts to deball it at every turn by drugging it, by debasing it, by inhibiting it, 
Tell me how that nation can survive. No nation in history has ever done to its.